this is the story of how I became a software engineer at 32. But first, we're going to fly to Portugal. Hello, welcome. Um, Jesus, this sounds awkward already. I've been wanting to do this video for ages. So I'm going to talk about how I got into tech in my thirties and became a digital nomad and traveled the world doing it. I did it with no computer science degree, no boot camp, and a pretty unconventional way of doing it. I did it with a full-time job as well and became a software engineer. And so if you're maybe looking to get into tech, you want to get into AI or cybersecurity or programming, this could be helpful for you. This whole page is going to focus on, on tech and also just my travels as a digital nomad as well. Okay, but first, let me show you the crib. So this is a co-living place I'm working at, and this is Madeira. Okay, I'm gonna sum up my background before I got into tech in a minute, okay? It's a long story, but long story short, I got a law degree, didn't wanna go into law. Did my first ever job was door-to-door -door sales for a dog charity, going around Manchester, showing people pictures of abused dogs, trying to get their credit card details so they can sponsor a dog. It sounds as bad as it was. Did loads of call center jobs, traveled the world for a couple of years, then did another door-to-door -door sales job in Australia selling milk. Then I was an English teacher in South Korea for two years, which was really fun. Worked in a health clinic in East Africa, did marketing and advertising, and then finally settled on recruitment and was a recruiter for four years. So clearly a very well thought out career path. And I had a bit of an existential crisis where I was like, I was just really frustrated with myself because I'd got to 30, I was earning a lot of money, I was managing a team of people and I was like, I'm just not really happy in what I'm doing. This is not fulfilling for me. I found it really boring. I wasn't using my brain. I know I wanted to work for myself eventually and just to have a life of freedom, location independence as well. So I don't like to be tied to offices. Really interesting technical work, good pay, I was just interested in technology. I think the work-life balance also in tech is just really good. And all the research led me to coding. And even if I was starting again in 2024, trying to get into tech, I still would start with coding because it's like the foundational skill of tech. If you want to work in AI machine learning, you want to work in cybersecurity, the cloud, programming, coding is going to help you along the way. Even though it's getting easier and we're going to write less code and read more code in the future, you still should learn to code in 2024. So I started totally from scratch. Um, no programming experience whatsoever. It took 11 months, so I started on February 2020. Got a web developer job 11 months later, so in 2021. And then once I was in that web developer job, I started really learning data structures and algorithms, leak code. And then my next job was as a software engineer and I've been down this space for a while now. Now an important part of my story is that I realized I wanted to learn to code in February 2020. A couple of weeks later, lockdown happened and I went all in on this. So I became obsessive and I basically made it the singular focus of my life to become a programmer and lived, breathed and ate code all day. I spent about four to five hours a day in the week learning to code on weekends, like seven to eight hours, set myself this goal that I would definitely achieve. And there's a quote which was really helpful for me, which might be helpful for you. And it's people overestimate what they can do in a day, but underestimate what they can do within a year. And if you want to learn anything new, for me, this is like the key advice. I also analyzed the job market and looked at where the opportunities were. And in February 2020, it was front end development. And then I went into building mode. So I went down this rabbit hole of coding. And honestly, I've just not come up since. Got on YouTube and Udemy and took it step by step. So I'd learn HTML, build something. Learn CSS, build something. Learn JavaScript, build something. So rather than learning all this theoretical knowledge, you just need to build stuff. And if I was starting again, I look at a practical issue I have in my life. Maybe it's a calorie tracker or it's something about the gym. And I'd build something geared towards that. And in terms of projects, I found the best way to learn for me was just gradually incrementing the complexity of the projects I was doing. So I'd build something and then I'd add on authentication or I'd work with a more complex API. I think at this stage as well, you were at very high quit rate territory. So I read the book Deep Work, which was really helpful. And it taught me that when I sit down to code, that whatever I'm focusing on, that it's 100% focus that I'm maximizing that time, which is helpful in particular if you have a full-time job. So then I'm approaching 10 months of learning with no social life. And I was like, I had a brainwave where I was like, okay, it would be really cool if I can find a company and they can pay me to learn on the job. 
All right, so why don't I just try and get a job? No one's gonna come up to you and say, okay, Andrew, you're ready now, you can start applying. So you've just got to back yourself at some point. So I started applying and then a recruiter randomly got in touch with me and he sent me a code test. I passed the code test. The job was actually PHP and I was like, okay, I don't know PHP. And it wasn't the perfect job. It was focusing on WordPress. I had zero experience with PHP and I was like, okay, I don't want to work with WordPress, but it'd probably be really good for me if I just accepted this job, get experience in the professional code base, keep learning React, keep learning JavaScript, data structure and algorithms, and see where this goes within a year. And just that policy worked out really well for me. After like eight months in this WordPress job, I started applying and got offered a software engineer job. It was actually like a 60% pay rise. And a key thing to note here, and coming from this from a recruitment perspective, is that for juniors, these companies, they know the level you're at, okay? You can't hide that. They're hiring you on potential. So that is why soft skills are really crucial at this stage. And I've just not really looked back. I've worked all over the world, like Africa, Europe, Asia, and it's just been a blast. It's been like the single best career decision I've ever made. Um, I've made a lot of bad career decisions to be fair. And also the tech industry is changing. It's going through this radical transformation at the moment. AI is gonna impact every sector, but if you're in the technology industry, you're just gonna have a lot of opportunities, I think anyway. And that was it. Thank you for getting this far. Uh, subscribe if you've not. So thank you for coming along this journey and I'll see you in the next one.